Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to check, we want to log into the device and we want to check um, to see how big the, um, the hard disk is so that we know what size of SSD drive we can change out to. So the first thing that we've got here, I'll just run you through the setup. We've got our, um, this is our boot drive. This is um, Macrium Reflect that's running on here. Uh, the NVMe um, option on here just means that I've pre-installed NVMe drivers so that it works with um, all devices, not just um, uh, standard devices. So this device is an i3. So what we're going to do is first thing we want to do is to boot off this and we want to have a look to see how big the drive is. So to do that, we're going to power on them. We're going to use the function F12 options on the uh, Lenovo idea pad to get into the boot menu. So we're going to turn it on and immediately press and hold the function key and then just repeatedly tap F12. And then we go, we're into the, uh, the boot manager. All right, so we're going to boot off the drive. Okay, so as far as we can see, um, this appears to be only using 60 odd gig of uh, disk space. So um, we can, what we're going to do is we're actually going to clone this to a 128 gig drive, uh, which should be more than sufficient, but we're only going to be able to clone um, these, if I just somehow show you we're going to be able to clone the first three partitions everything after that which is the uh, recovery section not really needed nowadays um, we are not going to be copying that so we're just going to be copying the first three uh, partitions onto the new drive okay so how do we go about cloning right so we've got our 128 gig drive solid state drive here uh, we are using this Fideco um, USB 3 to SATA interface. Now this device is really neat because it does SATA, it does IDE, small IDE and large IDE as well. So uh, a really useful tool for that. Um, and we've got that loaded and we can see the drive. If I just show you on here, we can see the drive that we've got down the bottom there. It's already got some partitions on it because it's not brand new. Um, we are doing this as uh, low cost as possible for our clients um, to keep their, their budget down. And they, they haven't got a huge budget, so we're doing this as cheap as we can. And we're reusing a drive. This drive is um, only two years old, only had two years of life used off it. So that should be more than adequate. So to go ahead and clone, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to select our primary drive up the top here and we're going to say clone this disk and we're going to select a disk to clone it to and the drive that we're going to clone it to is our 128 gig drive and we're going to select that what we're going to do is we're going to click on um, we're going to click on delete partition and we're going to remove all the partitions from the drive so as you can see here we've now got a completely blank drive with our partitions up the top here now when we click on next it's going to say that you can't uh, select all of the partitions as you can see there it says insufficient space on the destination drive so we're going to say okay there and we're going to untick drive d drive the 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 win um, recovery partitions, the Lenovo partition, and the LRS ESP partition. So we're just left with our boot partitions at the front of the drive and our C drive. And then we're going to click on next. And then we're going to click on finish. And that's then going to go off and confirm that we need to we want to overwrite the partitions on the ssd drive which we do so we're going to tick the box and click on continue and then we're going to let that run through until that has completed this is going to take several hours because the whole system's pretty slow um, but once that's completed we'll then run through um, changing out the drive and making sure that it all looks okay okay so that's now completed it's clone so we're going to disconnect the device and we're going to shut the machine down so on these devices this is a fairly simple changeover so you want to get yourself a Phillips screwdriver 
and on the back here you can see we've got our flap for our drive so we're going to undo that remove the flap and then we're going to slide out the drive like that we're going to take these sides off and that's going to go back in this way so we're going to put the uh, clip the sides back on on the new drive like that and then we're going to insert this back in here like that I'm going to pop the top on clip that all into place and do the screw back up and there we have it so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to take off the cover for the RAM because this only comes with four gig DDR4 memory. I do have some DDR4. But at the moment, not sure if that's going to work. So we're going to leave that in place and we're just going to see if we can start the machine up. Okay, so it's picked up. It's now got 8 gig of memory. So that bit's fine. So let's exit saving changes and see if it boots okay and it does so we're in so I'm now gonna let's get that shut down you can see the screen is absolutely filthy so we're going to give this a really good clean once we've got it back together that has now shut down so that is uh, the boot up times was previously it was about 15 minutes and that is now booting up in around about 30 seconds which is perfect so we're going to leave that four gig of ram in there as a freebie for her like that So cleaning the outside case, we use some isobrupol alcohol. But in terms of the screen, you obviously don't want to be using that because you will ruin the screen. So we're just using an antibacterial wipe just to give it a good clean over. Like that, and then we're going to take a soft cloth. Okay, that's that bit done, nice and clean. Next thing we're going to take a sheet with a isobrupol alcohol. We're going to put a little bit more on there. We're going to do all the keys to avoid the power key obviously <laughs> once that's done we're then going to go over the top of it with our antibacterial wipe
And again on the bottom, not so important on the bottom, just going to give this a generic wipe over. And there we have it. And then what we're going to do is another boot just to make sure. Not sure why we're starting up, but we're going to go into properties. And there we go. So we can now see that we've got, uh, it's running at two gigahertz. We've got our eight gig of memory in there because we've added another four gig for her, which is uh, free of charge. It's a freebie for her. Just go into the device manager, make sure that that's all looking good, which it is. So now we can close this down. We can give it one final clean off and then we can return this to our client. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.